The European Commission is presenting a plan on how European countries can prepare for the winter months when energy needs will be much higher. This comes as Europe is scrambling to find solutions as to how to reduce supplies from Russia after Russia's energy giant Gazprom claimed it could not fulfill gas contracts within the bloc. Some EU officials have defined that the plan is very controversial as different EU member states have different energy needs and it will be really hard for them to agree on a standardised solution. Meanwhile, oil prices are still hovering over $103 a barrel and natural gas prices have gone up 97% since the start of the year. Listening to what European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen had to say. Overall, the flow of Russian gas is now less than one-third to what it used to be, for example, at the same time last year. Russia is blackmailing us. Russia is using energy as a weapon. And therefore, in any event, whether it's a partial major cutoff of Russian gas or a total cutoff of Russian gas, Europe needs to be ready. For more on this now, let's go to Neil Atkinson, who is an independent analyst in Paris. Thanks for joining us today. Neil, first of all, you, you've heard it. I mean, off the record, some EU officials have said this plan might be very controversial, difficult to really put into practice. How effective do you think this, this plan is going to be? Well, in, in theory, it should be effective because uh, I think there is considerable scope, uh, not just uh, in industry, but also in households, uh, to use less gas uh, for, for heating and indeed currently even in the middle of this heat wave for cooling. Uh, and efficiency measures could be introduced without, I think, in, involving too much suffering. Of course, it then becomes problematic if we have a very cold winter or if the Russian supplies are cut off uh, almost completely very quickly. That would make it difficult. But if there is some kind of maintenance of Russian supplies, I think there is considerable scope for greater energy efficiency in households and in industry in Europe. Right, interesting. Where do we stand on summer restocking then? Because in June, European Union lawmakers approved a policy that tasked essentially bloc members to fill their gas storage to at least 80% of capacity by November. How far are we now? Well, they're making some progress, but the problem is, of course, that we've had uh, the closure of Nord Stream 1, We've had a, a reduced supply of LNG shipments from the United States because of the closure of a major uh, liquefaction plant there. Uh, and of course, we've got competition for supplies from the economies of Asia, which of course are uh, perfectly capable of paying higher prices. So yes, Europe is making some progress. There's no question of that. But I think they're still behind schedule and there's an awful lot to do. I think while they're also trying to fill their stocks, I would think they're also praying that we have a mild winter season, such as the one we just had in 2021-2022. Right, so I'm sure we'll have to see what happens there in terms of the, of the season. What do you expect really will happen on Friday? Because on Friday, uh, Nord Stream 1 is essentially expected set uh, to, to resume gas flows. Uh, but uh, European officials are really not sure this is going to happen. What's your feeling? Well, the, 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 in, the indication, I think, from, the, from the, actually from the mouth of Putin himself, is that the supplies will restart, but at significantly lower uh, rates than was the case before uh, the closure. And, uh, you know, Russia has the ability over the next few months to get inside the heads of European leaders, mess with their heads by reducing, expanding, closing, opening pipelines uh, to, to keep the Europeans guessing. My feeling is that the supplies will resume. For the time being, at least, Russia is making a lot of money from the maintenance of uh, fossil fuel supplies as a whole to Europe. And they will continue to supply, but at lower volumes. And unfortunately, their behavior will be increasingly unpredictable. Neil Atkinson, many thanks for this update.